I will concede that you didn't get up this morning dying for a video on landing light bulbs, but you did click the link, so let's get started. This is a GE 4509, the standard landing light bulb for a lot of light aircraft. These burn brightly and you can practically buy one at Walmart, but vibration just hammers these things, so incandescents like these always seem to burn out when you need them the most. So here's one of the better ideas that we'll look at in this short video. This is an HID, or High Intensity Discharge System. You've seen these things for years on off-road vehicles, and they're starting to show up in new airplanes from Cirrus and Diamond, to name a couple. They're also on a lot of new cars. Knott's to you from Wisconsin, a mod house, sent us this one for testing. HIDs typically have a xenon-filled tube inside a lens assembly that's connected to this high-voltage ballast. When the ballast fires, it excites the xenon, which then emits a bright white light. HIDs are bright, not quite as hot as incandescents, and they're durable since there's no filament to break. They're also expensive, like 500 to 1,000 bucks expensive, and they have to be installed right, otherwise stray RF energy can bounce around the airplane and trash radio reception. HIDs are a definite cut above incandescents. The latest new kit on the block is the LED, or light emitting diode lamp. You've seen these on cars and bikes too, and now they're showing up as landing lights. This one is called the Sunspot, and it's sold by AeroLeds, a new company in Boise, Idaho. It retails for about $495. Of course, we all know that LEDs are little seed-sized bulbs, and you pack a bunch of them together to increase brightness. This one has 16 LEDs in the lens assembly. It's also got something else. It's a combination landing and recognition light system. This housing heat sink thing on the back has some extra wires coming out of it, so it can be connected as a flashing recognition light, or with another light for a wigwag setup. It's actually pretty cool. Okay, if you're still with me, at least the concept of a $500 landing light hasn't sent you screaming into the night. But you might reasonably ask, how well does a landing light have to work to be worth 500 bucks? Well, we're going to answer that question. Out on the darkened taxiway, we position some of these reflective targets. And to add a little science to what would otherwise be ill-informed ranting, we're going to use a lumens meter to measure the actual light output. So let's go out on the taxiway and see what these things can do. Welcome to our landing light test range. You are looking down range at four markers. The first one is at 25 feet, the second one at 50, the next one at 100, and all the way down at the end is 300 feet, the length of a football field. You're looking at the 4509 illuminating these targets. As you can see, the beam is bright and narrow, but it reaches all the way down to the end at 300 feet. And this is the HID, a 35 watt HID. As you can see, the beam is a little bit bluer. It's narrower. It's uh, much sharper. And our measurements show that it's the brightest of the three. And last, is the LED light. Much broader beam, less well defined. It lights to the sides a little bit better. It does illuminate the most distant target, but not very brightly. As we navigate the darkened taxiway, it's possible to draw some conclusions. Incandescent bulbs are cheap and they're bright, but they're neither durable nor reliable. HID lamps aren't cheap, they're bright, and they last as close to forever as you might reasonably expect of any product. LEDs aren't cheap, they aren't as bright as HIDs, but they may very well last forever. Both HIDs and LEDs have one big advantage over incandescents. They can be burned continuously without much fear of failure. For more detail on this testing, check out the March 2009 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine at aviationconsumer.com. I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb. Thanks for watching.